Tom Doc is here. Isn't it amazing? Like he said, this little yes. thing here yes. can save your dog's life. Yes, it's not very big. Just have a couple drops wow. of that. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's actually a cat vaccine, and it's 0.2 milliliters. So oh, my goodness. Four or five drops that would go in the cat's nose and could save that cat's And that's yeah. what we're talking about. Right, exactly. Vaccinations for your pets. For your pets. It's, so it's National Immunization Awareness Month, and it's actually on the human side. The CDC started this. Um, and current events aside, let's not focus on right. COVID. Okay, that's, that's a different thing. We've got to look back at 200 years of history of vaccines saving lives, people and pets, millions of lives. This is a tough one because, you know, vaccines so much in the news right now. I know that's a lot of focus, but when it comes to your pets, I was telling Tom, it kind of does become personal and it's heartbreaking because I remember being a young kid and we had a dog who I adored died of parvo and you tell me that that's still rampant today. It's still rampant and the problem with parvovirus, canine parvovirus and actually the feline panleukopenia virus is a parvovirus too. In fact, mm. they think the cat virus went to dogs back in the 80s. Mm. Okay, mm, okay, and we didn't have a vaccine, but that virus is very hardy. It can stay in the environment for at least two years that we're aware of, wow. you know, and it's shed through feces and dogs are always sniffing. So yeah. they, they'll pick that up and they'll get it. And it's really hard on puppies because of a lot of uh, growing cells, rapidly mm -hmm. dividing cells, but even big dogs like this, I've seen hundred pound Rottweilers at a year old come in wow. and people are spending thousands of dollars mm -hmm. on hospitalization and treatment. Well, wow. let me ask you this. Is it, is it the same as humans, you know, when we're babies and as you grow to a toddler stage, there are certain vaccinations that are recommended at certain ages. Is it, is it the same for dogs that they have more so as a puppy and right. as they get older? Right, so we do boosters, okay? So because mm. mom gives antibodies to the puppies through the milk, yeah. okay? They have antibodies for anywhere from six to 16 weeks after being born. And those antibodies will eventually run out and the puppy needs to learn on their own. And that's what the vaccine series does. What it does is to try to find that window mm -hmm. where the maternal antibodies have run out and the puppies can start making their own antibodies and vaccinate them and right. make sure that they're gonna be protected. In different ways to give them these vaccinations too. That was a good question that you had, yeah. you know, wondering, is it, is it just via shot? Is it via swab, something else? Right, so most of our vaccines, especially for most viral diseases, are gonna go under the skin. They've got a nice, big area under yeah. the skin here. It's called subcutaneous uh, space and we can go right in there. They don't even know what's going on. Huh. There are some vaccines that we give through the nose, little nose drops. We don't poke them. We just mm -hmm. drop them in. Okay. And that will a lot, be a lot of upper respiratory type pathogens like yeah. bacteria, uh, rhinoviruses, adenoviruses, and that's where they live basically. And so that's the best place mm -hmm. to protect them. Uh, on the average here, how many vaccines should you give your pet? So we know we want to give core vaccines, okay? So for dogs, canine rabies, canine distemper, canine infectious hepatitis, and canine parvovirus. Those are all highly contagious, highly deadly, and in the case of rabies, can be spread to people. For cats, we want to vaccinate for rabies and feline panleukopenia, as well as an upper respiratory complex. Again, highly contagious, highly deadly. There's lots of other vaccines depending on lifestyle. If you've got a Labrador that you go hiking with and you're going on trails and they can pick up ticks, Lyme disease vaccine yeah. may be worth it. If you've got a dog that gets groomed a lot, like a little Yorkie or a Maltese, mm -hmm. the Bordetella vaccine is gonna be very important to protect against that airborne pathogen. So it really just depends, but definitely those core vaccines. So when you give them the vaccine, is, is it just one and done? No, it depends again on their age if they, or if they've ever had it before. Now, Orion here is four. He'll be due for his next three-year rabies and three-year distemper parvo vaccine coming up here very soon. I would imagine best word of advice, possibly just check with your local veterinarian. And I mean, it depends on the breed, depends on the dog. It depends on lifestyle um, and your own attitudes, okay? Only rabies is required by law in the state of Indiana. Hmm. Dogs, cats, and ferrets have to have rabies. <laughs> Everything else, talk with your veterinarian about. Mm -hmm. Don't go to the internet because they don't know your dog. They don't know what's happening here in Indiana right. as far as parvo outbreaks and things like that. That's your best source of advice. It's just, it's a heartbreaking thing to know that you could lose a pet for something that's right Easily there. Easily treatable. Yeah. That you can have, yeah. yeah 15 to $25. Wow. wow. Okay, and you compare it to parvovirus hospitalization starts at about 3,500. Wow. Ooh. Well, there you go. Well, Tom, thank you so much. Always a source of knowledge for sure. I feel like whether yeah. you're a pet owner 
or not. So thank you thank so you. much. And thank you, Orion. Such a good boy. He's such a good boy. Yeah. yeah, you hear us, don't you? Nathan Lowe would I know, like he, he wouldn't like that. Yeah. Hopefully he's not watching. <laughs> All right, Tom, thank you so much.